So these are the sig fig notes. Look back on these as often as you want. First, just a little talk about accuracy versus precision. Accuracy is how close you are to being right, like that. Precision is how close you are to each other. Our ultimate goal in a science lab is to be both. Um, I guess if you had to choose one over the other, I'd rather you be precise. I mean, I'd rather you be accurate. Um, I'd rather you be more correct. Um, but I'd, I'd really just rather you be both. So let's just be both. Uh, not really going to talk about percent difference. I decided it's, I mean, it's not something we ever use in class, so not something that you need to convert brain space to. We're going to focus on percent error because that is something that we use. It measures how accurate your experiment is. Percent difference measures precision. But again, don't really need to worry about that right now. So the accuracy is measured by taking the uh, accepted value minus the experimental. Divide that by the accepted. Take the absolute value of this guy and multiply him by 100. And that gives you your percent error. Basically, all it does is it compares your data to some accepted value. So here's what that looks like. We have a lab experiment. We measure the density of something to be 1.4. We then look up the correct, correct density of that substance, and it's actually 1.3. So how far off were we? Well, we take the accepted value. We subtract out the experimental value, divide that by the accepted, take the absolute value, multiply it by 100, and when you plug this little guy into the calculator, you end up with 2.94%. So we're actually, that's, that's close enough. Sorry, didn't know that was going to pop up there. Okay, sig figs. We're going to look at a series of pictures, and we're going to, I want you to look at them and tell me what the, in this case, temperature is, or maybe volume, or, you know, whatever. On this one, you've got definitely 40. We know for sure that it's 40-something. Looking at the little lines, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We know for sure it's 48. Then we know that it's above 48, but that it's below 49, so I guess we could guess 48.5. I'm sure about the 4, I'm sure about the 8, I'm not so sure about that 5. But I know it's, I mean, it's got to be close. So what about this guy? Well, looking at this, I know for sure that I have 5. Let's see, where can I write this? I think I can write it up here. 5 point. Um, I can see that each of these guys is 0.1, so I can go, let's see, here's my meniscus right here. So I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5.5, and it actually does look like it's exactly on that line, so I know for sure it's 5.5, but I'm going to go ahead and say 5.50. So I know that those two, the five and the five, I'm guessing on that zero. Okay, looking over here to this one. Oh wait, this goes with this, doesn't it? No, that's less than. Yeah, this is supposed to be the same picture, but it's kind of hard. You can tell better up here, about 48.5. And then I think this is right here. If we were, so ignore this one. Sorry. Um, if we were looking at this one, I know for sure that it's 60-something. Um, but beyond that, I mean, I guess if I had to guess, I would say 60, maybe 63. But I can't guess beyond that because I don't know. I know for sure it's 60-something, but I d I'm not real sure about that 3. And that's what a significant figure is. It's every number that you know for sure plus one more guy that you're just guessing at. So if you're looking at a number, how do you know how many sig figs are in that number? Well, if it's not zero, then it is significant. Zeros depend on where they're at in the number. Leading zeros, like zeros in front, like if we had point, zero, zero, one, two. These guys are leading. They don't count. So this particular number would have one, two sig figs. Embedded zeros always count. 
let's say we had 100 and 2. This 0 is in between, it's embedded to non-zero numbers, so that guy counts. So this number has 1, 2, 3 sig figs. Trailing zeros, there are qualifications. If there's a decimal, then zeros at the end of a number count. So if we had this point zero zero one two, and let's say we threw a zero on there, this is a trailing zero. There is a decimal. These two guys, these two zeros, they're leading, so they don't count. So we go one, two, three. He counts. What if that decimal wasn't there, though, when we just had 120? Well, now it's a trailing zero without a decimal. And so it is now not significant. If we put a decimal right there, yeah, I know math teachers go crazy when you do this and there's no numbers afterwards. But if we put that decimal right there, now the zero is significant. I'll explain a little bit more about this in class and we'll do a little bit more work. It's okay if you don't get the why right now. The why will come. Right now I just want you to get the just the rules. Be able to look at a number and tell me how many sig figs there are. Alright, so this is just stating that exact same thing that I just said. Alright, oh, and all of them are going to come up, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick all this up. Try to ignore the answers on the right side. But looking at these numbers, all non-zero numbers are significant. These zeros are in between, so they are two, five sig figs. Right here, non-zeros count. These zeros are at the end of a number, so they're trailing, and there is a decimal, which means they count. So there are three sig figs there. Here, we have these zeros are leading, so for significance sake, they don't count. Non-zero numbers, of course, count. This guy's in between, so he counts. That means there's four sig figs. Right here, we have two non-zero numbers, they count. And then these trailing zeros right here, there is no decimals, so they do not count for significance. So there's only two sig figs here. Right here, non-zero numbers count. This is a trailing zero. There is a decimal, so that means he gets to count. So there are four sig figs. Right, when you round, I'm not really going to talk a lot about this. Um, I would hope you remember how to round. Just make sure if the number you're round, if the number after the number you're rounding is greater than or equal to five, you round up. If it's less than five, you just keep that number the same. So practice rounding those. Make sure you understand how they're rounded. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Just rounded all of them to three sig figs. And the way you do that, just start at the beginning of the number. Go one, two, three. Round according to that guy. It's a five. Tells us to round the one up. Seven sixty-two. Same thing here. One. Two, whoops. Two, three, round according to that guy. Three tells us to keep this guy the same. 14.3. One, two, three. Four tells us, round according to this guy. Four tells us to keep this guy the same, so 10.4. I'm going to go ahead and skip down to this one. We go one, two, three. Round according to this guy, the 4 tells us to keep the 2 the same, but we can't just get rid of the 4 because there's a big difference between 8,000 uh, 24.5, and if we just completely drop this guy, we'd have 802 left. So, so we got to keep a placeholder here, so we just change it to a 0 and keep this 2 the same. If this was like a 5 or a 6 or you know anything higher, then this would have become 8,030. Alright, when you're calculating and you're dealing with sig figs, adding and subtracting, you only have to look at what comes after the decimal place and the numerical value going into your calculation that has the least decimal places determines where you cut your answer off at. So since this guy only had one decimal place, our answer can only have one decimal place. So you go one decimal place, round according to that guy. Uh, and here's subtracting the same thing. Multiplying and dividing, now you look at the whole number and not just what comes after the decimal. So if you look at these three numbers going into this multiplication, you have one, two, three sig figs, one, two, three sig figs, 
one, two sig figs. So our final answer can only have one, two sig figs. According to this guy, the zero stays the same. Well, if you just wrote 500, well, that's only one sig fig. And if you thought, hey, I'll just put a decimal here, well, now it's three. We're only allowed to have two, which is why you have to use scientific notation. And here's dividing. Same thing, three sig figs here, one, two, three, four sig figs here. This zero counts because it is trailing and there is a decimal. So three sig figs is the least number, so your final answer can have three sig figs. And that, ladies and gents, is all I got for sig figs. If you have questions, I'll be here.